Hello everybody, thanks for joining me again. So today I'm out on Dartmoor on a very windy bleak day but I'm heading for Ditsworthy Warren House which was made famous by its role in the film Warhorse. Just having to uh, negotiate some large puddles up here on the moor. Hopefully you can hear me because it's quite windy. Anyway, today I'm going to show you the farm and uh, give you some uh, tips on how I photograph it. I'm hoping for some dramatic light, but who knows. But also I was going to talk about why I come out on these trips in this sort of weather. It's almost a bit of therapy for me, a pressure release from the everyday. So we'll talk a bit about that. And of course, hopefully take some good photographs. Let's see what we find, shall we? Well, as you can see, I've made it to the house. What a lovely subject for a photograph. So I'm hoping that I'll get some breaks in this uh, overcast sky and we might get uh, a little bit of light on the house, but uh, I'm not holding up much hope. Anyway, let's see what we can find, shall we? So I'm gonna to struggle to get a good photograph this morning. It really is very dull, so I'm having to use a very slow shutter speed to uh, get some detail in the front of the house. But as you can see, with that uh, sky behind, the contrast is too much. So the best I've got is 1 30th, 1 50th of a second. But you can see the wind in the trees, especially the um, conifer over there. It's uh, at 50th of a second, you can see the blurred movement in the uh, leaves and branches. So what I've done is I'm taking two shots of each frame, one exposing for the front of the house and one exposing for the sky. And at least that'll give me a fighting chance in post-processing to try and blend something together. But even that's going to be difficult because of all the branches. But if you don't take the shots, you won't find out, will you? So I'm going to give that a go and then move around, see what other angles I can get. I'll show you this in the back of the camera. Well, here's the shot I've framed up. I've had to increase the aperture slightly. I'm at f 5.6, just to give you a little bit of light to see by and uh, I'll put an auto ISO on as I'm filming. But you can see how I framed it. You've got the wall leading up to the front door and the tree on the left hangs over the top of the house, frames it nicely, and that's just completed by the tree on the right-hand side. Really nice shot. I've seen lots of people take this. I just wish I had a better sky. Never mind. Let's take the shot, shall we? Well, it was a shame about the sky, not much detail, but not a bad start. As I said, this was a blend of two shutter speeds, one exposing for the sky and one exposing for the front of the house. Plus I've also added a radial filter to the front of the house and just increased the exposure slightly, just to bring out those details and lead your eye into the center of the photograph. 
So I've moved a little closer and a little bit to the left. And I quite like this composition. Puts the tree a little bit closer to the house. And with the wide angle lens makes a bit more of a feature of the wall leading up to the front door. So by putting the ISO up to uh, ISO 200, I've managed to get a shutter speed of uh, one, one twenty-fifth of a second, which should be fast enough to uh, freeze the moment in those movement in those trees. Let's try that, shall we? I've focused in on the house first. And then, just to be absolutely sure, I'm at f11, so most things should be in focus. But uh, again, just to help a little bit more, let's focus in on the wall as well. Okay, hopefully I can blend the two shots together. Well, in the end, this was just one shot. The one focused on the house and at f11, that still managed to get the wall in focus. And as I said, increasing the ISO to 200 allowed me to increase the shutter speed as well to 1 1 25th of a second, which froze the motion in the trees. And a better composition too. Well, I'm having to wait around just to see how the sky changes. A little bit brighter now, so managed to, as I say, up these shutter speed to 1 1 25th of a second. And I've turned the uh, steady shot off. I kept it on initially because of the, the wind. I was worried there's too much vibration in the tripod. But let's try some sh shots with the uh, steady shot off. If you're on a tripod, you tend not to use it and uh, it can actually put a little bit of blur into your shots as it's trying to do something when it doesn't need to. I'm just gonna keep uh, taking photographs as the the light changes. I'm not clipping the highlights so even though the sky appears bright at the moment in the photograph I should be able to bring those highlights down. Just decided to get behind this wall for a little bit just to uh, get out of the wind. Although it's not uh, that cold today the wind is uh, quite keen and as you'll see from my glasses it keeps raining it on and off so just having a little bit of respite. Also had to cover the camera up always carry one of these shower caps just to cover the camera up quickly. So I'd also thought I'd talk a bit about why I get away onto Dartmoor and other places with my camera. Of course one of the reasons is to try and take better photographs and uh, get them out there and to make YouTube videos but it's more than that. As I've done this over the last couple of years, I've found this is almost like a pressure release. I can go away on a weekend or if I'm feeling stressed at work, I can have a day off and uh, come and do this. And when I go back, I'm ready to start again. I guess back in the, the day, people didn't talk about man mental health at all. And uh, this type of thing was just seen as a hobby and probably just as well but now people talk about mental health a lot more so if your therapy is doing something like this just get out and do it so it's really strange talking to the camera like this I've been up here for a couple of hours now maybe the only person I've seen is the local farmer just checking some repairs on the track up to the farm but apart from that the weather's so poor and it's a Thursday today, so I don't expect that many people out on the moor. But that's what I like. I've been here just concentrating on the photography. And the light's getting a little better now, so 
I'll soon be back to that. But it enables you just to switch off from everyday life and concentrate on one thing. No distractions and just some perfect solitude. Anyway, if any of you photographers out there feel the same, then feel free to leave some comments below. But for now, let's get back to this photography, shall we? Well, the conditions aren't improving. Having to uh, keep covering the camera up. And, uh, but there's some mist rolling in, so that's uh, making quite a nice shot now. I'm going to have to cover up. Well, it was challenging with the mist and the rain. But in the end, I am happy with the shot. Shame there's still no detail in the sky, but you can't have everything. And with a little bit of mist, just gave a bit more depth to the photograph. Allowed me to pull out some details in the wall and the tree. And let the house disappear into the background. Just leaving the farm, just happened to go a little bit along the track behind it and fallen down into this valley. Now it's a little bit more sheltered and uh, there's lots to see here. There's the river running down there. We've had a lot of water so there's maybe a shot there slow exposure of the waterfalls and up ahead I can see some large standing stones on the hillside so I'm going to have a look at the standing stones first and then if the weather still holds go and have a look at the river so having said the weather was uh, against me Maybe there's still some opportunities, so let's see what we can find, shall we? Well, I've managed to walk a little bit further past those stone rows up onto the top of the moor. And wow, is it bleak up here. Just a few tools dotted around. And just wind and cloud drifting past. What I'm waiting for is some breaks just to light up the hillside beyond. As I was walking up, I saw a few, but wasn't quick enough to get the camera out. So I've got it ready. Just going to stand here for a little while and then make my way back towards the, the farmhouse. Well, I'm not sure how much you can make out of the uh, low cloud going across the hillside opposite. Here comes a bit of sun, so I better get ready. Unfortunately, not the photograph I was hoping for, but never mind, not everything works out. I did try to make something of this image just by making the sky a little darker so you could see the definition in the cloud and uh, cropping it to make the most of the grasses on the moor. Never mind. On to the next one. So I've come down back a little way from the top of the hill. I'm now back at the stone rows. 
This whole hillside is littered with large standing stones, some rows, a few burial mounds, and uh, I think I can make out some round enclosures um, which have collapsed. Really gives you a connection with the past, a place like this. Anyway, I'm getting cold, I'm tired, <laughs> but I still have my camera. So I'm going to try some handheld shots around here. I'm not going to mess around with a tripod. Yeah, let's see what we can find. Well, I'm hoping that the light that's coming down the valley up there is going to come down across these stone rows, or at least give me some dramatic skies in the background. This looks like the largest of the stones, really like the puddle around the bottom. Might get some reflections as well. And then I'll head on down to the other rows. Well, after wandering around the moor up to the standing stones, I'm back at the farm because there really is now some light coming. Let me show you. I'm just popping my head over the wall every now and again to see what's coming. So obviously I've got to be quick now. Here's the sun. Let's take some images before it disappears. So F11 again, ISO 100 this time. Shutter speed 100th of a second at the minute. I can actually speed that up a bit and uh, make sure I don't clip the highlights. just waiting for some more sun. As you can see, the wind was really blowing. So the 100th of a second shutter speed was just enough. And I managed to get some light finally on the front of the house. Really makes the image come alive a little bit more. I've added a Radial filter in the middle again, just to add to the brightness. Well, that's with the uh, stone rows. I don't want to miss anything, so I think I'm going to take the camera off the tripod and move around and see what else I can find. Still very, very changeable, so don't know how long this is going to last. But there are patches of blue going past very quickly. Well I moved around the house and took loads of photographs but this is the composition I liked the most making a feature of the wall and then using the tree still to frame the house but from the other side. Hope you like it. And that was the last photograph of the day before the weather came in again. Well, I've had to uh, dash recover yet again. The uh, 
weather's not improving and it's uh, forecast to get worse and uh, with severe gales overnight. So I think it's time to call it a day. I think I took some nice photos of the uh, house, even in these poor conditions. Hopefully the uh, rain and mist helped a little bit as well. So if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost anything. And uh, if you give me a thumbs up, a like, that will help more people find my channel. Anyway, until next week, cheerio.